The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 20 on your distance education program in chemistry for lower seat science. I am Longming Kingu Innocent, your chemistry teacher. We are still on the topic matter, properties, and transformation, and we are treating the subtopic atomic structure. This subtopic, the atomic structure, will be treated in the following lessons. Discovery of the electron and the proton, discovery of the nucleus, discovery of the neutron and Mosley's experiment, mass number, atomic number, nuclides and isotopes, the mass spectrometer, uses of the mass spectrometer, nature and properties of ionizing, ra ionizing radiations, nuclear reactions, stable and unstable isotopes, rate of radioactive decay, electromagnetic spectrum and atomic spectra, atomic emission spectrum of hydrogen, ionization energy, experimental evidence of ionization energy, part one, Experimental evidence of ionization energy, part two. Ionization energy and the shells. Ionization energy and subshells. Atomic orbitals and quantum number. Building up principle and electronic configuration. Electronic affinity as converse of ionization energy. Before beginning today's lesson, I would like us to correct the assignment we had at the end of lesson 19. Correction of assignment. Briefly describe the Rutherford Gold Fall experiment. Briefly describe the Rutherford Gold Fall experiment. The Rutherford Gold Fall experiment is also known as scattering of alpha particle experiment. Scattering of alpha particles experiment. Because in this experiment, the alpha particles were scattered by the gold foil. So after J.J. Thompson came up with a plum pudding model of the atom, in 1911, Rutherford and his co-workers by name Geiger and Marston decided to test the plum pudding model. And so they devised the gold foil experiment. In this experiment, they directed a narrow beam of alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold. Remember, an alpha particle is a helium nucleus. That is a helium atom that has lost its two electrons. That's a mass of four, an atomic number two. They directed a narrow beam of alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold. Based on the prevailing theory founded on the plum pudding model, most of the alpha particles should have passed easily through the gold, gold foil. And only, a slight only slight deflections sh should have been experienced due to the positive charges that were distributed throughout the, the atoms in the plum pudding model. So that was what they expected to observe based on the prevailing theory. That alpha particles should have passed through easily and only some few of them will be slightly deflected. So look at the setup for the gold foil experiment. There is an alpha particle source. Now we discovered with lead. 
to protect the person carrying out the experiment. And there is a gold, there is a gold foil and the fluorescent screen around the gold foil to detect the alpha particles that are scattered. Now, Rutherford carried out the experiment and these are the results he obtained. He discovered that most of the alpha particles went straight through or were slightly deflected. Now, this observation was not a problem because it could be explained by the prevailing plum pudding model. But now, what was surprising is that a small fraction of the alpha particles bounced off the gold foil at very large angles. So this was surprising. They never expected this, but they saw some of them bouncing back off the gold foil at very large angles. Now, even more surprisingly, they saw that some alpha particles even bounced straight backward towards the source. So these two things was a surprise to them because they never expected these. And moreover, the plum pudding model could not explain this. So look at the setup again. These are the gold atoms. Look at the alpha particles. Most of them passed through and deflected. Some of them were deflected at large angles and some of them bounced back at the gold atoms. So the fact that some of them bounced back and that some were deflected at large angles was a problem because the prevailing model based on the plum pudding model, the prevailing theory based on the plum pudding model could not explain this. So Rutherford came up with the following explanations to explain the observations they made. He said the atom is mostly empty space. This is why most of the alpha particles went through the gold foil. Secondly, he said, some alpha particles must have collided with particles of comparable size, mass, and charge to themselves. Reason why some of them were deflected. So some of the alpha particles must have collided with particles of comparable size, mass, and charge to themselves. That is why they were deflected at large angles. And a few alpha particles bounced back, suggesting that they came in contact with a massive area of positive charges. So these are the explanations that Rutherford gave based on the observations they made. Now, Rutherford concluded that all the positive charge and almost all of the mass of the atom are concentrated in a small region. And the small region has enough positive charge to account for the great deflection of some of the alpha particles. So based on the observations and the explanations he gave, they concluded that, or Rutherford concluded that, all the positive charge and almost all of the mass of the atom are concentrated in a small region. Now, the small region has enough positive charge to account for the great deflection of some of the alpha particles. So after the explanation and the conclusion he made, he came up with a new model of an atom known as the Rutherford model of the atom. Now, this model he came up with would explain why the alpha particles bounce back and why some of them were deflected at large angles. So in the new model, he said, protons are located in the positively charged nucleus. Remember, this nucleus is a small region that is positively charged. He further said, electrons are distributed around the nucleus and occupy almost all the volume of the atom. He said the nucleus is tiny and densely packed compared to the atom as a whole. So this is a new model of the atom suggested by N.S. Rutherford after the experiment with the gold foil. Today's lesson is titled Discovery of the Neutron and Mosley's Experiment. The outline of this lesson is as follows. Objectives, prerequisite, discovery of the neutron and Mosley's experiment, evaluation, assignment, and references. Objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the experiment that led to the discovery of the neutron and name the scientists who discovered the neutron. You should be able to state the characteristics of the neutron and describe Mosley's experiment. Prerequisite. In order to effectively understand this lesson, you must have mastered the following concepts of chemistry. The atom, properties of subatomic particles, and the properties of alpha particles. 
discovery of the neutron. After uh, N.S. Rutherford, uh, Rutherford came up with a new model, Rutherford's model of the atom, that is, after he discovered the nucleus and observed the protons in the nucleus, many scientists thought that there were some particles, some other particles in the nucleus together with the proton. For example, a helium atom has atomic number two, but the mass is about four atomic mass units. Now, this fact could not be explained by the fact that there are two protons in the nucleus. So scientists of that time thought that there were some other particles in the nucleus too, added to the protons. And then some suggested that there were some other protons in the nucleus added to the two that account for the fact that the mass is four atomic mass units. So uh, James Chadwick, being unable to accept or wanting to experiment more on the nucleus, discovered the neutron in 1937. Now, before him, some scientists had earlier bombarded beryllium foil with alpha particles and noticed that there was an unknown radiation emitted from the beryllium foil. And these radiations could knock off protons from the nucleus or from the nuclei of some substances. Now, but they, the scientists, thought that the unknown radiation could be gamma rays, could be gamma radiations. Now, James Chadwick did not buy the idea that the radiation, the unknown radiation, would be gamma rays. So he decided to carry out the same experiment and study the unknown radiation that was emitted when beryllium foil was bombarded with alpha particles. So again, he fired alpha particles at beryllium sheet from a polonium salt. Remember, alpha particles, as we've just seen, are helium nuclei. That is, helium atoms that have lost two of their electrons. So before bombarding the beryllium sheet with alpha particles, he placed a charge counter or an ion detector behind the sheet of beryllium to detect charges that pass through. No charge was detected by the ion detector. Now this confirmed the discovery of the scientists before him. But now, wanting to know more about this unknown radiation, he then placed a block of paraffin wax between the beryllium sheet or the foil and the ion detector. Now this time, there was a large detection of charge by the ion detector. Now look at it. At first, he placed the charge counter, he fired the beryllium sheet with alpha particles having a charge counter behind. He noticed that the ion detector recorded no charge. He then placed a block of paraffin wax between the beryllium foil and the ion detector. This time, there was a large detection of charge by the ion detector. So Chadwick explained that when alpha particles strike beryllium foil, they displace uncharged particles from the nuclei of beryllium atoms. And the uncharged penetrating radiation could not affect the ion detector. That is why, at the first place, there was no charge detection by the ion detector. But these uncharged penetrating radiations displaced protons from the paraffin wax, which, which were detected by the ion detector. Remember, protons are positively charged. So when the uncharged penetrating radiations displace the protons from paraffin wax, the protons being charged would be detected by the ion detector. That's why there was a large detection of charge when the, uh, the paraffin wax was placed in between the beryllium foil and the charge the ion detector. So on your screen, you have a picture or a diagram of the setup used by Chadwick. And you see clearly that there is a polonium source that emits alpha particles. There is a beryllium foil the alpha particles, they collide or they heat the beryllium foil. Now, uh, neutrons, which are neutral or uncharged particles that could not be detected by the ion detector were emitted from the beryllium foil. These uncharged particles colliding with the paraffin wax will displace protons which are charged and the protons are then detected by the ion detector. So this is a setup used by James Chadwick. 
So check me. Further studied the interaction between the uncharged radiations and the atoms of several gases. So he used the uncharged radiations to bombard other substances and gases and studied the interaction between the uncharged radiations and the gases. He also measured the range of the liberated protons. The protons that were liberated from the paraffin wax, he measured their range. And then after measuring and studying more, he concluded that the unusually penetrating radiations consisted of uncharged particles having approximately the same mass as the proton. And these particles were later termed the neutrons. So Rutherford uh, James Chadwick concluded that the unusually penetrating radiations consisted or consisted of uncharged particles having approximately the same mass as the proton. And these particles were later termed the neutrons. Basic properties of the neutron. The neutrons are neutral, that is, they have no charge. Reason why they were not detected by the ion detector. The neutron has a mass of 1.00866 atomic mass unit. That is 1.6749 times 10 to the negative 17 kilograms. The neutron is heavier than the proton. The mass of the proton is 1.007277 atomic mass unit. The neutron is slightly greater than the proton. So these are the basic properties of the neutron. Example one. The neutron was discovered by James Chadwick. A. What is the name of the experiment that led to the discovery that led to this discovery? B. What is a neutron? C. Draw the setup used by James Chadwick. Answers. A. What is the name of the experiment that led to this discovery? What is the name of the experiment that led to the discovery of the neutron? The experiment is called the bombardment of beryllium foil with alpha particles. The bombardment of beryllium foil with alpha particles. B. What is a neutron? What is a neutron? A neutron is a neutral nuclear particle with mass slightly greater than that of the proton. A neutron is a neutral nuclear particle with mass slightly greater than that of the proton. C. Draw the setup used by James Chadwick. Draw the setup used by James Chadwick. Now, the diagram on your screen is a setup used by James Chadwick in the experiment that led to the discovery of the neutron. The diagram, notice that there's a polonium source a liberate, that emits alpha particles. There is a beryllium foil. There is a paraffin wax and an ion detector. The alpha particles colliding with the beryllium foil displays uncharged particles called the neutrons. The neutrons cannot be detected by the charge counter because they are neutral. But this neutron, this, uh, the stream of neutrons are capable of displacing protons from uh, paraffin wax. And the protons being positively charged could be detected by the ion detector. Most of these experiment an atomic number. In 1913, Henry Mosley found that when he bombarded elements with high-speed electrons, they emitted X-rays. He observed that the frequency of the emitted X-rays depended on the element used. He also discovered that the square root of the frequency of uh, the X-rays emitted were directly proportional to the number of protons in the nuclei of atoms. And he called this number of protons the atomic number. So this is the equation he came up with. The square root of the frequency of the X-rays emitted being directly proportional to Z, and Z stands for the atomic number. He further said that the orders of this number, the atomic number, was exactly the same as the order of the elements in the periodic table. I repeat, he said the order of the atomic number he discovered was exactly the same as the order of the elements in the periodic table. And so he concluded that atomic number is a fundamental property of an element. I repeat, 
mostly concluded that atomic number is a fundamental property of an element. Example two, which scientist gave the name atomic number to the number of protons in an atom? Which scientist gave the name atomic number to the number of protons in an atom? Answer, which scientist gave the name atomic number to the number of protons in an atom? Henry mostly gave the name atomic number to the number of protons in an atom. I repeat, Henry mostly gave the name atomic number to the number of protons in an atom. Recall, it is important to remember that James Chadwick discovered the neutron in his experiment with the beryllium foil. Neutrons are nuclear particles having approximately the same charge as the proton, but no charge. Having approximately the same mass as the proton, but no charge. Henry Mosley found out, found out that when elements are bombarded with electrons, X-rays are produced. The square root of the frequency of the X-rays was directly proportional to the number of protons in the nucleus, which he called the atomic number. Application. To know how well you have understood this lesson, answer this question. The neutron is a third subatomic particle discovered after the electron and the proton. A. Which scientist discovered the neutron? Where is the neutron found in the atom? State two properties of the neutron. I repeat, the neutron is a third subatomic particle discovered after the electron and the proton. A. What, which scientist discovered the neutron? B. Where is the neutron found in the atom? And C. State two properties of the neutron. Answers. A. Which scientist discovered the neutron? Is it J.J. Thompson? Is it Ernest Rutherford? Is it James Chadwick? Which scientist discovered the neutron? The neutron was discovered by James Chadwick. So James Chadwick discovered the neutron. B, where is the neutron found in the atom? Where is the neutron found in the atom? Is the neutron found in the shell? Is a neutron found between the shell and the nucleus? Is a neutron found in the protons? Or in, is a neutron found in the nucleus? Where is the neutron found in the atom? The neutron is found in the nucleus of an atom. The neutron is found in the nucleus of an atom. C. State two properties of the neutron. State two properties of the neutron. State two properties of the neutron. The two properties of the neutron are the neutron is neutral. Neutral means that the neutron has no charge. So the neutron has no charge. The neutron is slightly heavier than the proton. The neutron is slightly heavier than the proton. So if the neutron has approximately the same mass as the proton, it means the two particles, the two subatomic particles, the neutron and the proton found in the nucleus, both contribute to the mass of the atom. So the two properties of the neutron are, the neutron is neutral, it has no charge. The neutron is slightly heavier than the proton. Assignment. Before our next lesson, I would like you to answer this question. Briefly describe the Chadwick's experiment that led to the discovery of the neutron. Briefly describe the Chadwick's experiment that led to the discovery of the neutron. 
References. Chemistry for the IB Diploma by Steve Owen. Advanced Chemistry by Michael Cloxton and Rosalie Fleming. Chemistry in Context by Graham Hill and John Holman. Complete Advanced Level Chemistry by Ngule Emano Eno. And finally, the Internet. We have come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on mass number, atomic number, nuclides, and isotopes. Mass number, atomic number, nuclides, and isotopes. So, see you in the next lesson. <laughs> Ona tege minga matege nyum Ona tege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njo biayen Ngani bana matege mot Ngani la kiri watege ndong Esa kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njo biayen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninyane njo biayen